I've been playing games for a long time now, and it never once occurred to me how these beautiful animations are actually created. So after just a few hours of research, not only did I discover that the gaming industry has been lying to us, but it's also super simple to make these animations ourselves in Blender. It's super easy to set up, completely procedural, and only takes three steps. So in Blender, delete the default cube in any way you feel is appropriate. And we're going to start out by adding in a simple plane. Now we're going to create these sort of streaks following our character's punches. And to do this, we'll be using the UVs of the plane. So make sure you don't extrude anything. I'll shape the plane into a sort of arch and add geometry with loop cuts where needed. You should end up with something like this. By the way, gamers, I literally just launched the Smeef Patreon. Assets, project files, materials, Smeef merch. If you want to support the channel in becoming full time and also get some goodies in return, please go check out the Patreon page, link in the description. This is where the magic happens. But before we can start, we need to do a few things first. Hop into the shader editor, make a new material and ensure you have the material settings set to blend mode alpha clip. You got that? We good? Okay, let's start. First, delete the principled BSDF and begin by adding a transparency shader and an emission shader. We're making this material from scratch. So let's mix these two together and we now need to find a way to make a seamless movement from left to right. So to do this, let's click the emission shader and press Ctrl T to get these three nodes. We don't need the image texture, so let's swap it out by clicking on it and pressing Shift plus S. From here, let's change it to a converter node and we'll be using the separate X, Y, Z. To make the texture push from left to right, I'll be using the Y channel. So I'll grab a color ramp and plug the Y value into its factor. The color ramp is now going to allow us to make that transparent factor in our shader. So I'll set up the color stops like this. As you can see, this creates a gradient on the mesh from the transparent value, gradually increasing to complete visibility, then immediately back to transparency. This is what will help us sell the effect of speed and movement when we get to step three. Moving on, let's now add in the details. First, I'll duplicate the mapping node and add in a Voronoi texture. Connect these two, and with the new mapping node, this is going to allow us to create some super cool patterns. But we'll come back to that in a second because we first need to do a tiny bit of maths to make this effect really stand out. Don't worry, hold my hand. Yep, we got this. All right, let's add in four math nodes. The first will be set to multiply. The second node will set to divide. The third node will set to add. And the very last node will be placed after the color ramp and set to multiply. Not too bad. Now let's plug in the Voronoi to the multiply. Let's also add in a value input node here and plug this into the add function. This add function is going to allow us to animate the texture. But for now, let's start honing in the look of the effect. First, I'll set up the Voronoi texture by playing with its values and also stretching the texture scale on the X and Y axis. These are the settings that I ended up using. We now have the core of this effect and the last step is to add in some color. So I'll grab another color ramp and pick a color scheme that I think looks nice. I went with this yellow and orange look. Once you've chosen your colors, plug the color ramp into the emission shader and crank that sucker to something like 50 strength. And finally, we can plug the multiply value into the factor of the mix shader. Did you know we've come? This is probably the simplest step of all, and it's what brings all of our hard work to life. Let's start by pulling open a timeline and selecting the value input. We want to now animate this over just a few frames. So on frame one, I'll pull the value back until this effect is off screen. Now I'll hover my mouse here and press I. Make sure this slider turns yellow, otherwise it won't have set a keyframe. I'll push forward four frames, move the value until most of the effect is on screen, and repeat the process. To finish this off, let's move forward just a few more frames and push the value until almost all the trail is invisible. And then for the final keyframe, I'll move one to two frames and push the effect entirely out of shot. You can get near infinite variation with this setup. Simply by duplicating the objects, 
changing the colors, or even playing around with other textures. But the thing is, even though we have all these amazing animations, this means nothing if you don't know how to implement this into your own workflow. And to find out how to do that, you need to watch this video right here.